Okay, so boys and girls, we're here today. I'm here to discuss with you one of my favorite reads called I Am Malala, and it's written by Malala Yousafzai with Patricia McCormick, um, and it's how one girl stood up for education and changed the world. Okay. Um, I picked up this book knowing her experience, what happened to Malala, but I didn't realize the layers that the book really contained or what her life story was. And from reading it, I didn't realize how much it would affect me. So the theme basically of this story is about resilience, perseverance, determination, courage, and one girl who really stands up for what she believes in, no matter the cost. Malala is an innocent girl living in a country run by terrorist control. She's determined to get an education in an environment where schools are being bombed, people are being killed by the Taliban. Then terror strikes close to home. In the summary, Malala is a young girl and she's living in Mangora, Pakistan. Okay? She lives with her family, she's got her parents, she has her two rambunctious brothers like any other family. Her dad actually runs the school that she goes to. Okay? So he's like the superintendent, she says, the janitor. He does all of the jobs of how basically to run the school. Malala is obsessed with getting an education. She realizes the importance of how it empowers you. The more you know, whatever you learn, it really brings you to that different level. So she loves going to school, she loves her teachers, she loves her books, and most of all, she loves being competitive with the other students. She's always first in her class, she always gets the highest grade, and she's determined to stay at that highest position. Around 2007, there was actually a radio DJ who started broadcasting on his, like as if you, when you listen to the radio, you turn the radio on in the car, he started just making broadcasts about these evils that he perceived, that he felt were going on in Pakistan. Like girls going to school, getting an education, um, women that were leaving their house and he felt they weren't properly wearing their burqa, which is their headdress, or just not properly being covered. And he really kept talking about this on a daily basis. And his rants intensified, where unfortunately, people in Pakistan who didn't have a good education, who weren't knowledgeable, actually started believing him. And that's how the Taliban was formed. They all started getting to, they, he started recruiting people and literally saying over the radio, I want you to go out and start bombing these schools, killing people. That's how the Taliban formed. Throughout that entire time, Malala lived in this world, in, this, in her city, where there were bombings going on all the time, um, living in fear. However, she was still determined to go to school. As long as her school was standing and it wasn't bombed, and she would find out the day she was going to school, if it were bombed or not, she continued to go. Um, and they just continued destroying Pakistan. There were a square set up in the middle of the town where they hung people who were killed. It was really, really devastating. But she stayed strong. Her father supported her. Her mother supported her. And unfortunately, they ended up on the Taliban's radar. On the 9th of October, 2012, the Taliban shot me on the left side of my forehead. They thought the bullets would silence us. The terrorists thought that they would change our aims and stop our ambitions, but nothing changed in my life except this. Weakness, fear, and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage was born. I'm just gonna show you some pictures now, and I wanted to read a little excerpt from the actual book. Exam morning passed, and I felt confident I had done well. Afterward, Moniva suggested that we stay behind and wait for the second pickup, which we did often so we could chat before going home. When the Dina arrived, I looked around for Atal. My mother had told him to ride home with me that day. But soon I was distracted as the girls gathered around to watch our driver do a magic trick with a disappearing pebble. No matter how hard we tried, we could not figure out his secret. I forgot all about Atal as we piled into the van. We squeezed in and took our usual places, about 20 girls in all, Moniva was next to me and the rest of my friends were across from us on the other bench. A little girl named Haina grabbed the seat next to me, the spot where my friend Shazia usually sat, forcing Shazia to sit on the bench in the middle, where we often put our backpacks. Shazia looked so unhappy, I asked Haina to move. Just as the van was about to pull away, a towel came running. The doors were shut, but he jumped onto the tailboard on the back. This was a new trick of his, riding home, hanging off the tailboard. It was dangerous and our bus driver had enough of it. Sit inside, Atal, he said, but Atal didn't budge. Sit inside with the girls, Atal Khan, Yusafzai, or I won't take you, the driver said with more force this time. 
tell Yal that he would rather walk home than sit with the girls, so he jumped down and stormed off in a huff. It was hot and sticky inside the diner as we bounced along Mangora's crowded rush hour streets, and one of the girls started a song to pass the time. The air was thick with the familiar smell of diesel, bread, and kebab, mixed with the stench from the nearby stream, where everyone dumped trash. We turned off the main road at the army checkpoint, as always, and passed the po poster that read, Wanted Terrorists. Just after we passed the little giant snack factory, the road became oddly quiet, and the bus slowed to a halt. I don't remember a young man stopping us and asking the driver if this was the Kushal school bus. I don't remember the other man jumping onto the tailboard and leaning into the back where we were all sitting. I never heard him ask, who is Malala? And I didn't hear the crack, crack, crack of the three bullets. The last thing I remember is thinking about my exam the next day. After that, everything went black. So I'd like you to find out what makes Malala the courageous and strong girl she is. How does she survive her tragic experience? And what happens to her family? I strongly suggest you read I Am Malala by Malala Safsai with Patricia McCormick and truly be inspired as I was. Okay, boys and girls, so that is essentially a book talk, okay? Um,